colon hydrotherapy is a process in which the colon is detoxified by means of purified water. Occasionally, a buildup of waste can accumulate in the colon. Using a continuous flow of water, this waste material is softened and broken down. These loose waste deposits, along with any toxins that may have built up in the colon, are flushed out of the body. Also known as a colonic, this restorative procedure aids greatly in the regeneration of the lining of the colon. A number of factors may help congest the colon to the point where a colonic would be needed to return the body to a healthy state. An older patient who has never had a colonic before may need many more treatments than a younger patient since their colon has been exposed to much more over a longer period of time. Your diet also plays a huge role in determining your treatment. Poorer choices in your food intake can harm your body's ability to remove waste effectively. Healthier food choices, on the other hand, actually aid your body in how efficiently it processes foods. Your colon's health is linked to the lifestyle you lead. Having too much stress, being overly emotional, or simply not getting enough exercise can cause issues within the colon. Medications or other drugs can also help prevent the colon from emptying its contents. Even something as simple as not heeding the call can create issues within the colon. Taking the time to eliminate the waste from your system is a must. Colon hydrotherapy is used to ease the effects from these factors. Along with these, there are several other conditions of the colon that a colonic can help to alleviate. The term leaky gut is commonly used to describe the issue of undigested food or proteins passing through the intestinal lining prematurely. When these proteins are repeatedly leaked into the bloodstream, the body begins to treat them as foreign invaders. As a result, a variety of immune responses such as psoriasis, eczema, and sinusitis can occur. The intestinal mucosa can be altered by medications, infection, diet, alcohol, caffeine, stress, and even tap water. Systemic candidiasis infection is one of the more common causes of leaky gut. With SCI, the Canada bacteria, or yeast, overpopulates in the colon. When this happens, it begins its second life cycle, mold. The mold then roots itself in the walls of the colon via rhizomes or tiny roots. As these roots penetrate the wall, it creates areas in which undigested proteins could easily slip out and leak into the bloodstream. White blood cells then snap into action and attempt to rid the body of these substances. Because of this, the body sets up an allergic reaction. Irritable bowel syndrome is a chronic gastrointestinal disorder, which true causes still remain unknown. IBS has been used as somewhat of an umbrella category for those suffering constipation, constipation altering with diarrhea, or chronic loose bowels. Abdominal cramping or pain, bloating, and gassiness are common symptoms. IBS is also known as spastic colon, functional bowel disease, or mucus colitis, even though it isn't a true colitis. Although the main causes for IBS are currently unknown, Research has shown that IBS may be the result of abnormal gastrointestinal tract movement due to a change in the nervous system's communication between the brain and GI tract. Others may suffer from IBS due to their colon being more sensitive, their immune system handling stress and infection differently, or it could be a hormonal change. Even though the reasons that cause IBS haven't been fully discovered, what it is not has been defined. It is clearly a physical ailment and not purely psychological. IBS is not the result of an anatomical problem, a clear physical or chemical issue, a cancer, and it will not lead to other gastrointestinal diseases. Currently, there is no cure for IBS. However, several treatments are available to aid in coping with its symptoms. Therapies from changes in your diet, exercise, stress management can help tremendously. Changing your diet can help sufferers of IBS with constipation. Gradually adding fiber-rich foods to your daily intake can help your colon move material. Foods such as whole grain breads and cereals, fruits and vegetables, along with prune juice and water, can help loosen the bowels. Avoiding foods like coffee, soda, chips, and white rice can also help ease your symptoms since these can slow down the passage of material. 
Remember, different foods affect people differently. What works for you may not work for the next. Keeping a journal may aid greatly in developing a list of foods that you can handle while knowing which to avoid. Since aspects of IBS are suspected to have stress-related roots, knowing how to manage your stress more effectively could have dramatic effects on helping ease the discomfort. Activities such as regular exercise, yoga and meditation do help lessen one's stress level and may in turn aid in IBS. You may also be able to approach your stress through behavioral therapy. These therapies help train your mind and body on dealing and reacting to certain events. Some have found that going through certain therapies such as psycho or relaxation therapy have helped to deal with their symptoms of IBS. Diverticula are small, marble-sized pouches that form in the wall of the colon. These pockets are found in areas where the lining is weak. The digestive tract actually bulges out from the inner layer into the outer. Due to the condition not usually causing symptoms, most people who have diverticula never know it. However, if the pouch was to become infected and inflamed, the new diverticulosis could lead to abdominal pain, fever, nausea, or a change in bowel habits. Diverticula can generally occur as a result of age, constipation, a connective tissue disorder, stress, medications, lack of exercise, or even from something as simple as ignoring the urge to have a bowel movement. Generally affecting the elderly, diverticula have been also known to appear in younger patients as well. Most times, areas where a diet that mostly consists of enriched carbohydrates while being low in fiber is typical, diverticula is very prevalent. As the body and colon grow older, the walls of the lining begin to thicken on the outside and narrow on the inside. This creates greater pressure on the waist as it moves through. In turn, the waist spends more time in the colon, allowing it to become harder and drier. Adding these to frequent and repeated straining, the perfect situation has been created for diverticula to develop within the colon. In most cases, a general feeling of pressure along with some periods of sharp pain could occur. Some may experience a tickling sensation in their abdomen as the pouches fill and empty. Bleeding from the rectum may also occur. A physician should be consulted as soon as possible, especially if you're over 40, as this may be an early sign of colon cancer. As the waste passes by, a small bit may get lodged in the ever-growing pouches. This can lead to an infection. In worst cases, a small tear or perforation could develop spilling the contents into the abdomen. Known as peritonitis, medical treatment is needed right away. Colitis is a condition in which the lining of the colon becomes inflamed, generally affecting the rectum and lower left portion of the colon. An acute or chronic condition can cause the cells of the inner mucosa lining to become inflamed and sores or ulcers could develop. This can lead to frequent emptying of the colon, abdominal pain, bleeding, lack of appetite, nausea, and fatigue. Colitis is generally found in younger patients, usually before they reach 30 years of age, but it's even been known to occur in the elderly as well. Certain aspects of the condition have led researchers to believe that colitis can be triggered by several contributing factors. Family history, genetic similarity, especially amongst identical twins, infectious or environmental toxins, changes in the immune system, smoking, oral contraceptive, or it could be psychological. Research has also shown that another likely cause of colitis is the immune system's reaction to the introduction of a virus or bacteria. Bacteria such as salmonella produce toxins that trigger the cells of the colon to secrete water and salt, which interrupt their normal functions. Viruses like rotavirus can actually damage the mucosa membrane of the colon and cause a disturbance in fluid absorption. This reaction produces two major forms of inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease is like colitis, but differs in that it causes the inflammation much deeper in the intestinal wall. Crohn's disease is also known to occur in other areas of the body, such as in the mouth, esophagus, and stomach. Diet along with gut healing nutrients, beneficial bacteria, and abdominal massage can help reverse the effects of colitis. Massage is used to increase the circulation of nutrients needed to heal the lining. 
It also brings about important nervous system responses whereby the entire body functions better. Constipation is the incomplete elimination of waste. When fluids such as lymph, bile, and blood in the large intestine or colon become sluggish, waste matter can become difficult to avoid. This can lead to an increase in toxins in the body and a decline to one's overall health. Some of the most common reasons for this condition can vary from poor diet, dehydration, laxative abuse, lack of exercise, scar tissue, irritable bowel syndrome or spasms, and stress. Once the colon has become overrun with old waste, toxins, and even parasites, a colonic may be needed to return the system to a normal healthy state. Colon hydrotherapy is a very safe and often pleasant procedure. Actually, if more people knew how toxic the colon can be, they may be inclined to get a colonic more frequently. During the course of a day, the body can come into contact with all kinds of toxins, unwanted bacteria, and just the normal waste from the body. If your colon isn't working at peak performance, these elements just sit in your system, sometimes for years. Colonics, however, can help bring the balance back to your system, making it a healthy environment. Each colonic session would be roughly the same. Every effort is made so that you can remain in a relaxed state for the duration of the procedure. A specialized tool used to filter water into the colon is called a speculum. The speculum allows for the insertion of purified water and the removal of waste. The type of speculum may differ from physician to physician, but all work basically the same. The speculum is inserted in through the rectum and about 3 inches into the rectal canal. A gentle flow of hot and cold water is used to create relaxation and contraction of the muscles. The waste breaks down and exits the body through a viewing tube. The entire length of the colon can be cleansed in this way. A therapist closely monitors the water pressure, temperature, and waste as it exits out of the body. From the waste, the therapist can better understand the patient's body and what exactly may be the cause of the issue or issues. Remember that the length and amount of sessions will depend on a few factors. Working with your therapist, a regular routine can be established helping you to take the steps towards creating a clean and healthy body.